Hey, sit in the front with him. Sit in the front with him. Morning, morning, everybody. How are we doing today? Y'all want to stand to your feet and sing with us this morning?
thank you for leading us through the storms. We thank you for being with us every second, every moment of every day, God, even if we don't see you there, you are there. We thank you for this and we praise your name. It's in your name. Amen. Y'all may be seated.
That has nothing to do with my message this morning. Just want y'all to know that. But that was in honor of football season is upon us. You know what I love about football? Not the violence. Not the, the contact. Nothing like that because I'm, I'm all about peace and love and gentleness and goodness and kindness. But what I really love about football is how, in, especially in Texas, because I've been in other states during football season, and they're lame, let me tell you. But something about football that brings the community together, you know, and, uh, and we got to be careful with football because some of us might have a tendency to worship football, you know, on Friday nights, on Saturdays, on Sundays, because some of you on Sundays, especially during football season, you're going to be like, especially at the noon kickoff. Trust me, I got it covered. I got it covered. But anyway, uh, uh, we just got to be careful not to put things like that on a pedestal. Uh, <clears throat> but I'm talking to myself. So that was in honor of football season officially starting. A couple of things that, uh, before I get into today's uh, little chat. Um, immediately following the service, we're going to have a special called business meeting. Uh, we're not going to be long. And if we do go along, it's not going to be my fault. Not this time. Uh, but, uh, but anyway, immediately following, uh, guests, you're welcome to stay with us. You want to see how we conduct business? Feel free to join us. Uh, also, there's a, a family in need in our community, in our church. Uh, some pretty severe plumbing issues. We have a, a, on our app, we have a, a tab set up for you. You can simply just go to the love offering and do they put a note in there for this particular family? Or we just what, just put it in there? Okay. Do that, or you can write a check, put it in the box. Just let us know. Let Tabitha know. Uh, but that's what the body of Christ is about. We, we help each other out. Uh, you know, one day might be one of us. You know, and, and um, uh, I know there was a time, <clears throat> man, we were, we were down and out, huh, Angie? Well, there was a lot of times. But I remember, uh, <clears throat> I remember I had to take a job at Walmart, and uh, uh, our kids were little, and I, I became an overnight stalker uh, the week of Thanksgiving. Y'all know how that's like. Back, Black Friday was a big thing back then. Now you can do Black Friday on like a Tuesday, which doesn't make sense to me. But back then, Black Friday was on Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, and so... I got a job as an overnight stalker making like eight or nine bucks an hour, big money. And uh, uh, man, we were broke. We were broke. Uh, we had gone through all our savings, gone through our 401k. I mean, everything was just, just catching up and it, does, it goes quick, right, Ange? And we thought we were loaded and we were gonna survive a long time, but it, it, it didn't. Well, <clears throat> fast forward to, I had, uh, I was off on Christmas Eve so we went to her parents. They loaded us up with gifts for the kids. We drove back after Christmas morning because I had to be at work that night. Walmart didn't play back then. I don't know if they play still anymore, but I try not to go into Walmart anyway. But uh, we, we came back to our living room, and it was slammed with gifts. I'm talking TVs, money, 
you know, stuff for the kids. I mean, it was amazing. And so I went to the, to the guys at church. I'm like, all right, who did it? What are you talking about? I mean, don't play it dumb. This is, this is the house of God. Don't be lying. I go, we don't need any of this stuff. He goes, it's not what you need, man. All right, you just don't rob people of a blessing. I said, somebody wanted to do that for you and your family? You just let them. And, and ever since then, I was like, man, being the recipient is, is humbling. And it's a, uh, an incredible feeling. If you've ever been there, you know what I'm talking about. But also being on the other side, those that give. Those that give. They did it again the next year, remember? It's like, man, these people need to chill. We really didn't. They, my kids didn't need all this junk. Amen. Glory to God. Uh, but, uh, I mean, they did it again. I'm like, man, these people need to stop. So I changed the locks to our house. <laughs> so I don't care what y'all are talking about. But anyway, be a blessing to be a blessing. Not the other way around. Don't wait for it. Let's do it first. And so keep in mind, be prayerfully considering how you can help this family within our church. Don't forget about the special business meeting to follow. To say we're in a hot mess. Oh, hey. That's my, uh, the beginning of my message series. The, the name of it is an understatement. But to also say that these are the worst days in the history of mankind, that's an overstatement. That's an overstatement. We're still sitting in a comfortable chair, in a comfortable environment, with, with the freedom to not worry about if they're going to crash through our doors and arrest us for meeting. So we're not living in the worst days. To say we're living in the last days, it's a good possibility. I'm not a prophet, but I have a theory. And we'll talk about theories here in a minute. To say the apocalypse isn't going to happen or that it's a conspiracy theory, now that's absurd. That's just absurd. There are too many things in God's word. I believe in biblical prophecy. Too many things in God's word that have already happened, but there's a lot of stuff that hasn't happened. This ain't a prophetic Sunday word this morning, but I just feel like I need to give you a little preface. I gave you a brief word last week on in the beginning God. This is where it started for the universe as we know it. And almost immediately thereafter, the enemy Satan, and I'll say Satan, has been doing everything in his power to destroy God's creation, specifically his most prized creation, and that's us, you and me. He created us in his image. He said in our image, I'll get to that in a minute. He created us in our image. So we are his most beloved creation, humans. Safe to say that us humans are image bearers. We bear the image of God. So if we don't grasp this truth, then the God of the universe that we know and trust, the idea of God, the way we know and trust him, it falls apart. I know so many Christian evolutionists. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, but they're out there. They want to believe in the God of the universe like you and me, but they also want to throw in this other stuff to try to make things logical. And when it comes to God, there's nothing logical about God. He's supernatural. There's things that we can never comprehend until we're in his presence. We're not going to comprehend it. There's no way to even try to. But logically, humans, we've always tried to bring God down to us when it's the other way around. We need to go to him. So it brings me to this. Again, we're in a hot mess. Amen. We don't even know who we are biologically. We don't even know who we are biologically, much less emotionally and certainly spiritually. Gosh, we don't know who we are. I mean, Doug preached a message a few weeks ago on identity. And like I said last week, we can preach on identity every week, every week, and have Bible studies on identity every, every week, every time we get together and we preach on identity. This is who you are. And we still won't get it. We still won't grasp it. We still won't grasp on the fact that we're a mess and that we're struggling with the very existence, with our very own existence. 
So it brings me to this. We are lost, or at the very least, we're losing touch with God. And I'm getting to the good part. We are drifting further and further and further away from Him. And why do I keep using the pronoun we? Hey, don't get on me on using this pronoun. We're accepting all the other pronouns, they, them, he, who, she, he. We're accepting all those other pronouns. We don't even bat an eye at that. Well, we, the church, at the very least, we're allowing it. Some of us are engaging in it. Some of us are enabling in it. Some of us are actually encouraging it. I know people right now who have adult kids who are encouraging their kids to transition to the opposite gender. And they sat where you sat every Sunday. And their kids sat where our kids sit every Wednesday. And they encourage it. They're not only encouraging, they're encouraging it publicly. And when you encourage it on Facebook, it's legit. You're letting the world know that I want my biologically born son to now be a woman. (laughs) And I'm proud of her. And I'm talking about we, the church. And for those of us that don't say anything, the silence is deafening. Science. Anybody in here like science? Any science majors out there? All right, okay. You might not like me after church. Is that okay? You still forgive me? Science. Tell me if this sounds right. Shake your head. Science is the pursuit and application of knowledge and understanding of the natural and social world of following a systemic methodology based on evidence. Remember that. Methodology based on evidence. Ooh, it's getting good. That's a simple definition that I got out of sciencecouncil.org. Evidence. What is evidence? Glad you asked. The available body of facts of information indicating whether a belief or proposition is true or valid. Okay? Simple definition. Science was not one of my favorite subjects in school. Sorry, ma'am. It was not one of my favorite subjects in school. All right? However, I did love experiments. I like looking at stuff under a microscope. I love dissecting frogs. I did. It was amazing. I'll do it right now. I wish I'd have had a frog to dissect in front of you. Mixing stuff in a bleaker, watching it do some crazy stuff, I actually loved it. All that other textbook stuff was utter nonsense. No offense. I will say this. One time, I think I was a freshman, I memorized the periodic table. For extra credit. I kid you not, as God is my witness, we're at church. I memorized the whole thing, perfect score. All right? I forgot it. All I got is H2O. (laughs) All I got is H2O. But I did memorize it. There were many things about science that I would often question. I remember my biology teacher in 10th grade, Mr. Martin. He was a Christian, but he was what you call a Christian evolutionist. Mr. Martin was a great guy. I didn't think he liked me. I got one academic award in high school. I was an A-B student, believe it or not, even though English is my second language. I was an A-B student, but the only academic award I ever received was from him, and it was a biology award for for, for the whole Fort Worth ISD. Well, anyway, me and him would often get into discussions about evolution, and I would always... People would love in my class, my fellow classmates would love when me and Mr. Martin would go at it because they knew pencils down, relax, it's on. And we'd go back and forth and we would argue. I'm 15 years old. We would argue about this stuff. Why? Because I had some questions. Sean, you love it when Eli asks questions. That's good though, man. To be inquisitive. I love it at camp, first encounter that I had with who Eli really is. We have our first group setting, 
And we're in a little circle behind a lamp under a tree, and it's incredibly hot. And Eli notices that our church name is under kitchen duty. And Eli wants to know, why is our church name under kitchen duty? <laughs> Valid question. Valid question. It meant you got to clean up after that meal. Valid question. But that's how me and my, Mr. Martin were. We'd, we'd, I asked questions. I had questions about stuff. Some things just didn't make sense to me. Like t- teaching theories as facts. We do it. We do it. We're teaching, we're teaching stuff, at, especially at the higher education level. It's mind-boggling. We're sending our students to get educated at DBU. I'll just say it. Any college. They're all turning that way. Well, DBU is a prestigious Baptist university. Baylor used to be. Hello. <laughs> used to start it off as a seminary. Now it's a cemetery. Come on. There's more than two genders, and they've proven it. Yet you got scholars on both sides that'll say, wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. So now they're politicizing this stuff, and we're allowing it. We're allowing it. We can read Genesis 1. I read it last week. Either we believe it, either we believe it all or none at all. Jesus wants either 100%. He doesn't care for 99%. We can't be in or out. What we can't be in the middle. We can't be on the fence. We got to be in or out. Either we believe it all, we don't believe none of it. That's why it's important to believe from the beginning. We were created male and female. Genesis 1, 26. In our image, in our likeness. So we can't have people in science dictating to the church. Because they're experts in their field, but even they differ, and I'll show you that here in a minute. I love it when they go at it. It's amazing. It's beautiful. I love it when medical experts question Dr. Fauci, Robert. I love it. It's amazing to me. The smartest virologist in the universe is questioned. God forbid we question Dr. Fauci. I had questions. What's wrong with that? Was it a real virus? Yeah, I asked that. But then when I got it, (laughs) I had it pretty good, huh, Lacey? I had had a decent job of it. God said, okay, it's real, homeboy. It's real. Now, I never questioned that it was real. I questioned the other stuff. You know what I'm talking about. So I had questions. You should have questions. Ask the questions. Teaching theories is facts. E equals MC squared. What is it, kids? Theory of what? Relativity. You see what our fine public education is doing? But I guarantee you, Luke knows how many genders there are. Shh. It's not Q&A time. The youth pastor's coming out, Sean. Sorry, buddy. The theory of relativity, if I'm not mistaken, ma'am, is still a theory? Okay. Teach it as fact, though, right? No? Okay. This was Einstein's effort in superseding Sir Isaac Newton's theory of mechanics. I'm getting about to bore y'all to death, but I'm getting to a point. There have been many other theories that are still called theories, but are embraced as facts, whether we teach them or not. We teach them or not. It seems like every month a new gender is added. X, Y, X, 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 Y, X, Y, X, X, X. Pretty soon there'll be a Z. They'll throw in a Z in there. You know, and before you know it, it's like a million different genders. Pretty soon gender reveals are going to be a thing of the past. What color are they going to use? Here they're going to pop a balloon and it's going to be empty. We haven't decided yet, but we'll take your gifts. We'll take gift card. We're registered at Amazon Prime. I mean, really, seriously, it's no longer going to be blue and pink. What are gender reveals if they get their way? Come on, man, let's be real. Let's be real. What colors? We're going to run out of colors. It's amazing, isn't it? But that's how I process. That's how I think. There are other theories, some some pretty well-known, some not so well-known. 
Information theory started in the 40s. Game theory. Kids, you love that. Somebody brought up the idea of gaming, and it became a reality. Here's, here's a good one. The oxygen theory of combustion. Some dude in the 1700s, he didn't discover oxygen, but he discovered that you can use oxygen to blow stuff up. He discovered, I'm like, I thought of you, Miss Terry. I don't know why. When I was going through my notes and I'm like, I don't know why I need to mention this to Miss Terry. I'm like, this is crazy. Some dude before the 1700s discovered oxygen. And I'm thinking, I'm like, what if he hadn't discovered oxygen? What would we be breathing? I'm like, it's like if he, thank God that dude discovered oxygen. It's like amazing. Humans, y'all are just incredibly intelligent. Thank you for discovering oxygen, Mr. Oxygenator. It's like, it's like, but this is how we process who we like and who we think are really, really smart. Who we think are just, oh man, that guy's got more degrees on the wall than there are in a thermometer. You know, it's like, man, he's amazing. She's, she's incredible. We have to listen to them. Plate tectonics, that's a theory. Ain't nobody been down there to check if they're actually there. What about earthquakes? Yeah, what about them? It's like, let's be realistic here. We got we to gotta do something. We got to think about something. Quantum theory. Y'all like quantum physics, kid? Yeah, you like it? Chemistry? Okay. All right, never mind. Here's my favorite. Some of y'all may have never heard of this. Some of you have, I love talking about this stuff. Heliocentrism. Anybody know what that is? Plots, I know you do. Heliocentric. It's a guy named Copernicus. Copernicus conceived the idea that the earth revolves around the sun. Before that, millennials, not millennials, no offense, Sean. Millennials before that, everybody thought the sun, or the sun revolved around the earth. We'll get to that in a minute. But Copernicus, being as smart as he is, he said, no, the earth revolves around the sun. And so Copernicus came up with this idea. Well, guess who reigned on that parade? A guy by the name of Albert Einstein challenged this theory. Now, is it safe to say that Albert Einstein is a pretty smart guy? Theory of relativity, is he pretty smart? Probably one of the smartest human beings that you and I have ever read about. True? Albert Einstein. Because he's even coined the phrase that if you got a kid that's very, 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 very smart, more than likely you're going to call him, hey, that's my little Einstein. Right? You with me? Nobody's ever going to say, ooh, there's, there's little Johnny. Nobody's ever going to say that with somebody that's very, very smart. No, we're going to call him Einstein. Hey, Einstein. All right? Well, here's what Einstein said to Copernicus or his idea. No, they weren't contemporaries. He said that that in order to accurately detect motion, now we get into Newton's world, one must be outside of that system. So in other words, we don't really know if the sun's revolving around the earth or the other way around because we are within the system, within the solar system. Look, I'm just telling you what they said, okay? It's kind of like when I quote the Bible. When I say stuff that Jesus said, people are like, I can't believe he said that. He's acting like he don't have a mother. Kimberly is a pastor. When I quote Jesus, it's like the world's going to end. And he actually said that too. But I'm just telling you what these guys said. It's very, very smart people. So I love it when they go at it. Einstein was that guy. I'll give Einstein a lot of credit. Homeboy would drop a bunch of rain on people's theories and ideas. I wish he was around today. I wonder what he would say to Fauci. Here's my political rant of the morning. I love it. I love it when smart people go at it, unlike our Congress. Theory of evolution, still a hot debate. Again, a theory being taught as a fact, embraced by the masses. You know what? I, 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 I got a lot of stuff. On, on this, on this information. It's information, right? 
So I'm, I'm thinking, I really believe this. I don't think it's ever happened. But I really, I really believe this. If they ever find a fossilized butterfly in close proximity to a fossilized caterpillar, smart people, Robert, way smarter than me, are going to determine that those are two different species. Why? Because a, fo- a fossil, you can't extract DNA or, or testable uh, tissue. You can't, you can't do it. That's why they found these uh, mammoths, woolly mammoths. I'm not sure why they call them woolly. Somebody's very creative. Probably found a patch of hair somewhere, and they say, ooh, it must have been a woolly mammoth. See, that's how they do it. That's how they do it. But anyway, I really believe that smart people will determine that a caterpillar and a butterfly are two different species. Why, Josh? Because they're two totally different looking insects, right? Completely different, yet they're the same DNA. Same DNA. Okay? But smart people get just too smart for their britches. I can't wait till they find that. Can't wait. I'm waiting. Recently, we had a, we had a global event. By the way, uh, Lacey is a uh, nurse in Waxahachie, Baylor. And uh, she's, she's actually was a big part of, in the pulmonology area, right? Respiratory, breathing. Why can't they just say breathing easy terms like that? I'm going to go see a breathing doctor. You got to say you know, all these crazy words I saw. I didn't even know what a necrologist was. I'm like, who's billing me this? A kidney doctor. Like, why can't they just say this is a kidney doctor? But anyway, Lacey is full aware that uh, the virus is legit. So I'm not, gu- I'm not going there. It was legit. Trust me, I had it. Recently, we had a global event, and literally, it was a global event. Apocalyptic in nature. But what it really was was a dress rehearsal for what is to come. I'm not trying to be an alarmist, okay? I'm not a prophet. I'm not telling you uh, that things are going to get worse just to scare you, but things are going to get worse. They're not going to get better. And they're slowly de- uh, decaying. We're decaying as a people. We're decaying as a church. We're already decaying as a society. I believe in biblical prophecy. I believe it wholeheartedly. There is a group. I will affectionately call them the woke environmentalists. This is a very large, influential group, screaming literally that the earth is cooking. The polar caps are melting at an alarming rate. Now, a very famous face of this movement is actually a teenage girl by the name of Greta Thornburg. You all heard of her? Anybody talk about her? She's like the hero. Hey, my hero. At the World Economic Forum in 2016, this young Swedish teenage girl quoted as stating, our house is on fire. I want you to panic. Hey, man, preachers have been saying that for centuries. Our house is on fire, Robert. I want you to panic. Yet a little 16-year-old girl, she's 19 now, but a little 16-year-old girl said that. And the world is panicking. Glaciers are melting. According to reputable scientists in the field, like Discovery Magazine or our USGS.gov, have gone on record that sea levels will rise by one foot by 2100. So we got 72 years to prepare for that one foot of sea level rising. But I want you to panic. Okay, I want you to panic. Our house is on fire. Glaciers are melting. I don't know if the Titanic hit an iceberg. I'm not going to go there. Too soon? No, it happened like over 100 years ago. But I want you to panic. Did you catch what I just said? I'm a voice of reason here. I'm getting to my text. This is the foundation. This is the introduction. These experts say 
that if all the ice on the polar caps and all the glaciers of Greenland completely melt, sea levels will rise to 230 feet. Virtually flooding every coastal city like New York, Baltimore, D.C., San Francisco, Los Angeles, Seattle, Portland, just to name a few. I'm like, what's the problem? What exactly is the problem here? What is the problem? These same experts, this is their stuff, claim that it won't happen for a few thousand years. I got this information from the USGS.gov, Discovery Magazine, and others. It's their stuff. It's not some preacher in California that's spewing this out. This is their information, their stuff. Feel free to go Google it. Feel free to go research it. But I want you to panic. Ask questions. So we trust the science. You heard that here in the last couple of years. Trust the science. Trust the science. Trust the science. Trust the medical experts. Trust the medical experts. I don't have a problem with science. Miss science teacher, I don't have a problem with science. I don't. I have a problem with scientists. <laughs> I have a problem with them guys. Them fools. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. I didn't say it. The Bible did. Is global warming happening? Is climate change happening? Well, let me tell you, I've lived in Texas since day one. There are those that, were, that will probably question that statement. But I've been breathing this Texas air since the moment I was born in the sparkling city by the bay, Corpus Christi, Texas. But far too often, we've had the heater on in the morning and the AC on in the afternoon right here in this great state of Texas. Are you with me? We had climate change in a matter of six hours right here in the state of Texas. So I don't question whether or not climate change is happening or not. We see it on a daily. We just witnessed several weeks of 100-degree weather and a drought to flash flooding. I literally saw in our backyard, I literally saw rapids in our backyard from right to left. I look out of my bedroom window, and I see a stream of water. I'm like, what the heck? We just had a drought yesterday due to that climate change. But they're going to say, you see, I want you to panic. <laughs> oh, well, anyway. We can, blame college, we can blame climate change, but I call it Texas. Folks, I'm going to say this. It's going to be a hard one for some of you. I'm going to say this. Let's not trust anyone that doesn't put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Can I say that again? Let's not trust anyone that doesn't put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Why? Because he holds all things together. Colossians 1.17, he's before all things and by him all things hold together. They come together. He holds them together. He's in control. Again, if we don't get it right from the beginning, then we don't get it, get a lot of things right after that. In the beginning, God, it's enough for me, created the heavens and the earth. Faith is what allows us to believe this, live this, trust this. But let's be reasonable here. It requires faith to believe that all things, like time, space, and matter, magically appeared from nothing. That's what they're teaching. And then that nothing caused itself to explode. That's what they're teaching. And then from that catastrophic event, disorder moved to order. I don't know if you've ever seen an explosion. I see them every 4th of July. There's nothing that explodes that moved from disorder to order. I've never seen a firecracker of any kind explode and then magically put itself back together. Never seen it happen. Ever. Well, wait a million years. I'm like, come on, dude. Who's got faith now? Sir Isaac Newton, third law of motion, science, come on. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So here's what's basically happening right now. You want to teach the reaction, but you can't explain, explain the action. Can I say that again? You want to teach the reaction, 
but you can't explain the action. Faith and a whole bunch of it and a whole lot of trust. What do I mean by that? Well, we are all got faith in something. When I sit in one of those chairs, I don't even think about it. I have faith that it's going to hold me up. That's faith. We all have faith in something. Whatever, whatever somebody reputable that we trust, if they tell us something, we're going to go with it, right? Most of the time. Hey, man, uh, I'm a mechanic, but I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but your gas tank is empty. I think you need gas. I'm going to trust the gauge, right? So we trust in something. Well, you got to have a lot of faith to trust that nothing existed and that nothing turned into something, time, space, and matter. And then that time, space, and matter somehow magically exploded. We call it the Big Bang Theory. No, kids, it's not a TV show. It's actually a thing. Big Bang Theory. It's not a bunch of nerds on a TV show. Okay? Thought I'd throw that in there. It's actually a thing. In my humble opinion, and, and I say this with all humility, <laughs> most of your scientific experts don't even want to hint at the possibility of intelligent design. They would much rather teach from a self-righteous educational woke platform to a bunch of peasants who won't even question things. Like, where did that matter come from? What caused the matter to suddenly explode? What conditions were present that caused the explosion? These are simple questions. These are simple questions. And, and somebody very smart in a wheelchair that can't even talk was talking through a pipe, and it sounded like a computer-generated voice, said this. He goes, yes, the universe can come from nothing. And you know what the science world did? Gave him a Nobel Peace Prize. Because Hawking said so. Hawking said so that the universe was created from nothing. But now that he said it, oh, see there? And the science world was like, I knew it. I was right all along. There is no God because Hawking said so. Go look it up. But very few of us flat earthers won't even bother to question things. So they keep on, keeping on, keeping on with your tax dollars. Oh, that went there. Heck, we're paying for uh, student loan debts. And, oh, anyway, not part of my notes. I apologize. Can we edit that, please? In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were created through him and apart from him. Not one thing was created that has been created. Life was in him, and that life was the light of men. That light shines in the darkness, yet the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man named John who was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that all may believe through him. He wasn't the light, but he came to testify about the light, the true light, who gives light to everyone was coming to the world. He was in the world, and the world was created through him, yet the world did not recognize him. Still don't. He came to this own, and his own people did not receive him. Still ain't. But to all who did receive him, a few, a few, he gave them the right to be children of God, to those who believe in his name who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of man, but of God. Here's my favorite part, verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observed its glory as the one and only Son from the Father, full of grace. And what? Truth. Truth. Nothing is sweeter than to embrace truth. It's liberating. It frees us. It frees us from the falseness of mankind, from the falseness of the evil one, Satan. To, ab to, to observe the mess that we're in as a nation, as a planet, it should burn deep within our souls, not to only embrace the truth, but to testify about the one and only Son of God, Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. 
I love being out in the community. And no, I'm not handing out tracts. And sometimes I'm acting a fool, so I got to be careful. But I love being out in the community because I want them to know what I represent. I don't just represent the church, Community Baptist Church right here in Big Time Ferris, Texas, but I represent the Son of the Living God to testify, hey, man, we can have fun. I'm going to come support you, man, in your stuff. I'm going to come support you in your things. I'm going to bring you lunch. I'm going to provide you some food. I'm going to hang out with you. But I want to testify, man, there's something far greater than football. I know that's hard to say that in Texas. Something far greater than science. Something far greater, and his name is Jesus. He's our only hope. It should burn in us that when we're out there in the communities, and many of you spend a lot of time out there, they should know what you represent. St. Francis of Assisi. He got a lot of awesome quotes, but this is one of my favorite ones from him. He said, preach the gospel. A Catholic monk. Preach the gospel. And if necessary, use words. <laughs> you know what that means? You got to live it. You got to show it. We got to display it. If necessary, use words. That's why I want to be out in that community. That's why you're going to start seeing people in the community. Visit our church, visit our community, visit our people. Oh, I believe there was a big bang, kid. I believe there was a big bang. But I believe God is the one who caused the big bang. This big bang occurred the moment God spoke it into existence. And then come to the realization that it was created through him, by him, for him. Why? Because he's going to hold all things together, regardless. I'm not concerned about another pandemic. I'm not. I'm not concerned if I get it again. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not concerned about another drought. It's going to happen. <laughs> I'm not concerned about the polar caps or the glaciers melting and flooding our coastal cities. Definitely not worried about that one. I'm not concerned about when I take my last breath because to, to be absent from this body is to be in the presence of the Lord. Paul said it's a win-win. For me to live as Christ, to die is gain. Philippians 1.21, it's a win-win. Live as Christ, die is gain. Live as Christ, die is gain. It's a win-win. For us, now, until that day, just like the man named John, more than likely John the Baptist, who came to testify about the light, the light of Jesus, we are now the modern-day testifiers. We are now the modern-day proclaimers. We are a hot mess in desperate need of the light of the world. We need King Jesus to shine bright, brightly over the darkness that is gripping us today. So us testifiers need to shed some light in this darkness. Somebody said the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The great commission is coming literally to us. To our back door, to our side doors, to our front door. It's literally coming our way, whether we like it or not. Some people don't like the big church. I don't like a bunch of them. Not because they're big, but because they're a bunch of big old buffoons. Trust me, I'll say it to their face. That's why they don't like me. That's why I get emails. Some of us are scared of that. I ain't scared of that. I'm apprehensive. We don't have a full house right now, but we don't have a whole lot of parking. We're landlocked. A few more people, and we're full in here. A little apprehensive, but I welcome it. Robert, if we got to go to two or three services, we'll just have to do it. With no raise. You okay with that? But I'm okay with that. You know why? Because we need to let our light so shine before man that they may see your good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven, Matthew 5, verse 16. We need to let our light of Jesus shine so bright that they want nothing. They want nothing else but that. I want what that guy has. I want what he has. I've had millionaires tell me, actually just one, tell me, man, I'd trade places with you in a heartbeat. 
Let's start with our checking account. I'll give you mine, you give me yours. I'll just take one of yours, the smallest one you got. Let's trade. Sean, I, I must have something that they want. Maybe some joy, some peace. Do we witness a lot of people not wit, uh, experiencing joy and peace? It's agonizing to me because I don't comprehend that. I have bad days. I had a rough week, then I Candace. I was not feeling very well. She was not feeling well the week before that and gave it to me, but that's okay. I forgive you. We all have bad days, but when bad days turn into bad weeks and bad weeks turn into bad months, we need to figure out, do we have that? Do we have Jesus? <laughs> or do we got something else? So we got to let our light shine. Our light shine bright. It's going to get worse. We're a hot mess. I got one more message in that hot mess next week. And we're going to get hot mess in somewhere else. Pray with me. Father God, I thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your love, your forgiveness. I thank you, Father, for these body of believers. I thank you for the love that they have for you and each other. I thank you, Father, that they recognize the fact that we're going to be a beacon of hope for this community. Father, help us all to grasp the fact that we need to be a light amongst darkness. Father, if we've got, if we've got a lot of pain, anxiety, and, and depression in the house of God, can you imagine what it's like out there? Help us to get our bounce Give us our joyful bounce, Father. We possess something that the world needs, but they don't want. They need it. Help us, Father, to be that people that when we cross paths with somebody, that they say, I don't know what he or she has, but I want it. I want that joy. I want that peace. Oh, such a beautiful place to be. And thank you, Father.